first thing in the afternoon here, and even in the morning. I get up early in the morning and begin to thank God and praise Him for His goodness and thank God for everything that's happening. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And He gives you faith, okay? Hallelujah. We're not putting faith in ourselves or in this building or the name of Abundant Life Healing Center. We're putting our faith in Jesus Christ. One and only. No one else. Just because I'm preaching, I want you to have faith in Jesus. Amen? Now, then it says in 1 John 5, 14, now this is interesting, now that you're praying, this is the confidence that we have in Him. This is the confidence we have in God. This is the confidence we have in Jesus Christ. He's my Lord. Amen. The reason we have confidence in Him is because He has the power. In every situation in your life, get that in your spirit. Get that in your heart. Amen. This is the confidence, another word for confidence, this is the faith we have in Him. Because faith is confidence. And if we ask anything, anything, doesn't matter what you're asking for, we ask anything how, according to His will. We're going to ask God's will to be done in whatever you're asking for. Asking God's will in what you're asking for. Then what does the scripture say? He hears us. Oh, they're asking for my will. His ears are open. I'm hearing music in my ears. Hallelujah. Now, how important it is to know the will of God for your life, my life, for the life of the church, for your neighbors, for the whole city of suffering. The whole world to know the will of God. Not somebody's opinion, but God's will, right? When we have confidence in the faith of God, we will also then have the confidence in the will of God. Amen? Because having faith in God, God's faith lines up with the will of God. Every time. God's will backs up the faith that is in God. We are fully persuaded now, and we're going to trust in God's will. Hallelujah. And also, we trust in His faith that is in Christ. Knowing, when we know this, that we have faith in His will and faith in His faith, knowing that God will hear me. Say, God will hear me. Every one of us. You understand? This is not like, I'm better than you. I got more faith than you. No. We all pray to the same God, and the same God is the one that's going to answer your prayer. Amen? I'm making it very plain and simple. Hallelujah. Then it says in 1 John 5, 15, if we know He hears us when you're praying, if you know God is listening to your prayers, that you're talking to Him, amen? And you know that God knows what's going on. God knows what I'm going through. God knows my mountains, amen? And I, I know God's here me because I want to move my mountains out of the way. Right? Yes. Hallelujah. Now listen to this. This gets better. That whatsoever we ask, we know that we have a petition. Petition, when you go in the Greek concordance, is that we know that we have the thing we asked Him for. Not just a petition, just to put it on the shelf. 
says, we know that we have the very thing we ask him for. So whatever you're asking him according to his will, amen, we know the thing that we're asking him for, that we desire of him. What are we desiring for God to do for you? So when we're praying, we're asking this according to his will, and what we know that whatever we're asking him is going to give it to us. Where he's playing. It's much more even easier with the Finnish language because it really makes it perfectly clear. He said, what you ask for is what you get. That's his will. So we ask according to his will. We know he hears us. And because he hears us, he gives us whatever his will is. Wow. Ask anything in my name, God says, I will do it. What will happen when we pray according to his will? Things will change. Amen. How many want to start praying God's will in your life? Amen. You want to know what the will is? We're going to tell you. <laughs> Lord, God. So what is God's will for your life? This is where it comes. My people call my men shall humble themselves and admit to God where we're lacking in our lives, where we're lacking in love, where we're lacking in faith, we ask according to the grace of God, we are willing to submit to the will of God for our lives, because that's what we're asking for. So when we humble ourselves to God, and to the will of God, and to His faith, we actually come boldly to the throne of grace, and we have confidence in believing what we're asking according to His will. Amen. So we place our faith in the faith of God when we ask Him, and what things ever we desire to pray believe in His name, we are fully persuaded. I am persuaded. Hallelujah. Completely sure God hears me because we know we're asking according to God's will. God's will is to give us whatever we ask Him according to His will. Now, very simple. Is it God's will to forgive you? Yes, it is. When we repent. Well, we, 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 gotta, we gotta sin and we repent of it and we move that mountain out of the way. That's His will. Amen. Is it God's will to heal you? Yes. yes, it is. Is it God's will for you to be free? Yes. Is it God's will for you to be blessed? Yes. Amen. It is. Is it God's will to restore to you everything that the devil stole from you? It is God's will sevenfold, amen? It's God's will. Amen. It says you catch the thief and you have to pay back sevenfold. Amen. Well, I tough luck. You just got ripped off and you just lost it all and you might have to live with it and so so on. So say so on and say whatever, right? No. You don't have to take that. Whatever he took from you, you got to come back. Whatever you ask his will to be done, God, whatever you do, I'm going to receive whatever the devil stole from me. He's going to pay back. 
Because we're asking according to His will. God's will is not for people to take advantage of Christians and rip them off. And if they try to rip you off, you have every right to pray that God restores whatever was stolen from you. You understand? If He steals your joy, you have every right to retrieve it back. If He steals whatever sickness or disease that's come on your body, you have every right to be restored to your health. Amen? We have to understand we are not depending ourselves to try to do something. We're depending on God. When God is our source of hope. Amen. And we're going to submit to pray according to God's will in our lives. Is it God's will for us to be filled with the Holy Ghost? Yes, it is. Is it God's will for us to walk in the faith of God? Yes, it is. To the, to the pool of Podesta, you know, to wait for the moving of the water. So when Jesus saw him, verse 6, laying there, he knew he had been there for a long time. He said to him, this is it. Will thou be made whole? That's an old King James language. Let's modernize it a little bit. Is it your will to be made whole? Do you want to be healed? The man is listening to Jesus telling this. The man 
the important man asked me, Sir, I have nobody to help me here. When I'm in trouble, trouble, nobody helping me to get in the pool. Because if you get in the pool when the water's troubled, you'll be healed. But while I'm trying to struggle, trying to get to the pool, someone else gets there before me. Therefore he got made, he got, he was made whole and I missed it all. Now it's interesting here when Jesus heard that, verse 8, Jesus then says to this man, Rise up and take up your bed and walk. What in the world was Jesus doing? Why did he command this man to rise up and walk and take up your bed? Have you ever figured out why Jesus said that to him? You want to know why? Because this man believed even though he's been there for years, that he's going to be healed. Amen? He believed if I get in the pool, man, I'm going to get it. I'm going to be healed. His faith was reaching, believing to receive a miracle from God. He was waiting for the water to be stirred up. He waited for the angel of the Lord to come down and stir it up so I could be healed. Instead of that angel showing up, Jesus showed up. So when he said that, his heart was already open to receive a miracle. All Jesus did was speak to his body and command him to be made whole. Amen? Immediately, he commanded, rise up and take up your And this man immediately rose up, was made whole, and took up his bed. And the same day was a Sabbath day. Boy, that just really stirred up the religious doctrines. You know, you're not supposed to work on the Sabbath day. You know, you're not supposed to carry anything. We sit in the for years, and now he gets up and walks away. Whoa, he just broke the Sabbath. <laughs> it's going to say praise God the man is healed amen and I believe God healed this man on the Sabbath day just for that reason just to just to let the people know that it's not about the Sabbath they say it's about being having faith in God and believing he believed in the will of God for him to be healed and Jesus responded in faith to the will of God that he was walking in and commanded him to be made whole. So how important it is for you to believe in the will of God that you're praying for. Again, what stands in the way of our will? See, he asked if it's your will. See, he didn't ask if it was God's will. He says, is it your will to be here? Oh, well, I know it's God's will. What about your will? Do you believe it's your will to be healed? Is it your will for God to bless you? Is it your will for God to set you free? Is it your will that God is going to restore to you everything? Is, is it God's will? Is it your will to believe whatever you're asking for, you're going to get it? But you got people saying, well, I don't know. Well, you expect to get something with that eye on there. It sounds very spiritual, doesn't it? There's no faith in it. <coughs> I hope so someday. They thought Lazarus, yeah, he's going to raise up in the last day. <laughs> Jesus out of resurrection and life. Amen to today. I am the one that's going to raise everybody from the dead. I'm here, I'm going to raise Lazarus now, so I can prove that I am who I am. Jesus said, I know who's inside of me that can raise the dead. And that same God that raises the dead is inside of you. It's his will. Change the conditions, right? Are you listening? 
Doesn't matter if you need to be healed or set free from sin or whatever. You see, our will, your will and my will, need to be fully persuaded. I am fully persuaded that God's going to bless me. We believe in God's will for my life that God is going to heal me and God's going to set me free and God's going to bless me. It's all placed on total trust in the faith that is in God and standing in my will believing and agreeing with His will and we have now faith in the faith of God. Your will has to be in a hundred percent agreement with God's will. It's not enough for God to believe it, but you need to believe it for yourself. You see, sometimes we just believe in ourselves, but we don't believe God. God's will to do it. So you've got to believe God, and you've got to believe in your own heart. Getting it? Praise God. And no wonder I've been working on this for three days. <laughs> I'll have both finish in English. And finish really makes it finish. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Romans 8 and 1. He came from the, down from the mountain. The multitudes followed him. Verse 2. Behold, a leper came and worshipped him. Saying, Lord, if it be your will, you can make me clean. How many people are coming to God today? If it's your will, you're going to bless me. If it's your will, you'll set me free from drugs and alcohol. If it be your will. But they're not asking to have His will to be done in their lives because they're believing that God's going to set them free. There's people are using if it be your will as an excuse for not getting healed. Did you hear me? Mm -hmm. If it's the Lord will, He will do it. But if not, I have to just live with it. <laughs> Are you listening? Mm -hmm. If it be your will, it's not an excuse. It's the only reason He was asking if it be your will is because He wasn't sure that if it was God's will to, to heal Him or cleanse Him. So if you have any of those thoughts that if it's your will that I should receive something from God, you need to repent for having that in your thought and begin to believe that it is God's will. Because when he asked that from Jesus, Jesus answered him right away. If it be your will, you can make me clean. And Jesus stretched his hand and touched him and said, I will be thou clean. I will be thou healed. I will be thou delivered. I will whatever you're asking for. He took that question out of his heart. And when we get those if it be your will out of our minds and start realizing what God's will is, we're going to get more results in our prayers and we're going to get more answers and there won't be no ifs. And ifs are nothing but unbelief. Any time the devil gets you to question God, it causes you to doubt. If you're thinking if it God, if it be your will, God, you're going to restore to me, you're, you're doubting already to start. So you need to move that if it be your will out of your mind and get the will of God in there. Are you listening? Praise God. And immediately he was cleansed from the left. Let me see, right? How many see what they're saying? In surrendering everything to God, to make God your Lord, your life to be free from every sickness and disease. Amen. The interesting thing about this, when the leper came to Jesus, what did he do? He bowed down to Jesus and began to worship him. Do you understand what this man was doing when he bowed down to Jesus when he know he's full of leprosy? Leprosy is like a type of sin. 
When you're coming to God, you begin to worship God. You're bowing down because you are now surrendering, laying down all your trouble, you're laying down all your weaknesses, and now you begin to worship God because you're exalting His power above yours. Above your weaknesses, above your fears, and above your doubts. And you bow down, you're laying it down. You're not saying, here God, I'm offering this to you. You're laying it down because I want you to become my God. I want you to set me free. I want you to set me on fire. I want your faith, your will to be in life in my life. I'm willing to give up my life. And you don't get rid of nothing until you lay it down. Sickness, disease, your fear, your worry, your sin, your weakness, all these things, you've got to do it. Because now we're surrendering, we're worshiping now to come into the connection with a living God. People say, I, I praise the Lord, hallelujah, I worship Him. But are they bowing down? Are they surrendering their, their, their carnal life? Are they giving up their life to have His life? Are you listening? See, people want to, God to bless them, but they got to give up themselves. That's why He said, Whosoever shall say to this mountain, worship brings all the mountains down. Surrendering humbling to begin to pray because we're giving up our mess to be transformed into the glory of God. It's a lot easier than we thought it was. Hallelujah. No wonder the devil's mad at me. He don't want this on YouTube. <laughs> glory to God. Hallelujah. So, we're declaring today God's will to be in our lives because we're willing to now understand why I worship, why I praise Him, why I sing to Him, why I'm giving up this world. And sing that song, Take this whole world, but give it Jesus. Amen? Amen. Take this whole world, but give me Jesus. Take this whole world, but give me Jesus. No turning back. I ain't no way. I'm not going to go back into my stick and sin no more. No more drinking. No more getting high on dope. No more. No more. Nothing but holiness, righteousness, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. No more excuses. No more lies. Nothing but the truth. Amen. Hallelujah. We're declaring His will into our lives because we're asking God to change us. Because we've got to give up our life to have His life. That's what it's all about. Surrender when my life dies, then His life comes alive. When my life is gone, then it's no longer me living, but Christ living in me. No wonder that. No wonder we're, we're having lots of fun because this is going to be a painful thing to your flesh. Get your flesh is in, I don't want to die. I like sinning. I like lying. I like living in sin. I like lusting. I like all these things. And you're telling me to give up. Like a dope dealer came and met me downtown Sudbury and was uh, selling cocaine. And I said to him, I got something better than cocaine. He said, what do you got? It's like a Jesus. <laughs> so then he started making fun of me. He started advertising. Everybody come over here. There's a man here that's selling Jesus. Come and get it. He yelled it out. Holler full blast. I didn't have to do the preaching. He was doing it for me. Glory to God. So after he finished Telling everybody about it, they said, well, how much is it going to cost me to have this Jesus? Because he was thinking, it's like buying dope, like cocaine. I said, do you really want to know what it's going to cost you? 
Oh yeah, I'm gonna go. I said, you sure? Yeah. I said, it's gonna cost you life. <laughs> You're gonna give up your life to have this life. He walked away all mad. Poor man. He didn't want to hear that. Don't tell me about that. I like my sins. Well, you're going to hell. That's all I can tell you. Why would you want to go to hell? Amen? No way. I'm too happy to go to hell. Go to God. Now. See, he believed God can heal him and it's God will to heal him. So when our faith is not sure, that's what we have. Wavering. Amen. Now, I'm going to bring another scripture, Mark 9, 20. Well, I'm not going to, I'm going to Mark 9, 23, but basically there's a father that has a son that's demon possessed and they brought this son to the disciples and they couldn't cast him out and, and so then they brought him to Jesus. And Jesus says, how long has it been? He said, well, it's been ever since a child. He keeps throwing himself into the fire, into the water. That thing is trying to destroy it. That's the demon spirit inside him. Then Jesus said to him, if you can believe, your son is demon possessed, if you can believe for your son, all things are possible when you believe. If you can believe whatever you're believing for, all things are possible to you that believe it. Are you listening? Mm -hmm. and straight away the father cried, all the child cried out, tears. He was crying. Tears coming running down his face. I believe. But then, in his brokenness inside his heart, he said, Help my unbelief. Interesting, isn't it? How many of us are believing? And yet we're struggling with unbelief. The unbelief that's robbing <coughs> what we're asking for. Right? As a result of this, everybody saw that people keep running together and they all came to see what's going on. They like the excitement. They want to see what Jesus is going to do now. What does Jesus do? This is what Jesus does. You dumb and deaf spirit, I charge you, come out of him. Enter no more into him. <coughs> he cast him out. Why did Jesus cast out this demonic spirit out of the son? When you have a father that says, I believe, but help my unbelief. You ever wondered about that? You want the answer? Okay, the answer is the part that he believed was good but when he confessed help my unbelief he was repenting for having unbelief in his life and he, as he asked for mercy he was repenting for not being able to have faith to believe for the deliverance for his son because he repented and asked forgiveness, Jesus was able to exercise the will of God in setting his son free because he washed his unbelief away and resurrected his son and set him free. So if we have unbelief about anything, Speak to the mountain of unbelief. Confess and repent any unbelief in your heart and ask God to set you free. 
we got to be very honest about our shortcomings. We got to be very honest about our weaknesses. We got to be very honest in where we're struggling in our lives, whatever it is. And believe me, you know, and God knows, and God is using the circumstances to bring you to the end of yourself. And the way you come to the end of yourself, you pray and lay it down. Did you get it? Isn't it good? Now, hallelujah. I still got one more page. <laughs> I gotta top it off now. This is all that Jesus began to teach that all originates when Jesus was teaching the disciples how to pray. This is where it all starts. Because the disciples say, teach me how to pray. Right? Matthew 6 and 9. After this matter, pray ye therefore. Now listen to this. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Religious circles use that terminology in their prayers. But it's been spoken from their hands. What is really saying when we call God our Father, you're beginning to worship Him as your Heavenly Father. Amen. We begin to declare the God who's in heaven in the spirit world. Amen. And we begin to worship and honor His holy name. And when we begin to worship and honor him, when we come into the service and begin to worship and praise God and, and thank him for his goodness, we're beginning to yield and humble ourselves to the authority and the power of the, of the kingdom of God. We make him the supreme authority over all heaven and earth who rules over everything and we worship him. We make him our God. There's no We make him our king, amen. We make him our Lord and we worship him. Praise the Lord. Your kingdom come. You're asking the kingdom of the living God to come alive inside of you. You're asking the kingdom of God that has the power and authority over heaven and earth. You're asking the kingdom of God that, that Jesus paid the price to die and raise him from the dead. You're asking that kingdom of God, the divine power of heaven and earth that stands behind in the name of Jesus on every person. And we are declaring your kingdom now come and live in me. I yield to your kingdom. I yield to your life. Your kingdom come. We're asking Jesus to come alive inside of us. Then he says, and your will be done on earth as is in heaven. Your will, everything that is God's will that is in Christ Jesus our Lord, that redeems us, that saves us, that cleanses us, that washes us in the precious blood and the offering of his body. Let dead. And that's the will of God. So he tells us with the glory of God, you will be done in me. I am going to be like him as he is, so am I in the world. Then he says, so God has given up, exalted Jesus, highly exalted to, and given him a name that's above every name. That if that at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow, things in heaven, things in earth, and things out of the earth. So we bow to the name that's above every name. And every tongue that did confess Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We declare it. He is our Lord. We worship Him. 
daily make us say, give us our daily bread, our daily provisions. Give us the spiritual meat that we need for every day. Daily food, spiritually. Forgive us our debts as we forget our debts. We always live in forgiveness so we can forgive one another for our trespasses and shortcomings. And God begins to cleanse us. It's the will of God. If we don't admit, if you don't admit your, your shortcoming, God can't forgive you. And lead us not into temptation. Oh God, don't let us fall into the traps of Satan. Keep us away from all evil. Because in the end of our prayer, in doing the will of God, you have the kingdom. Amen. You have the power. In my life, amen, you have the glory forever. Come alive in all of us. Let Christ come alive. Do you understand why we need to pray? Do you understand why we need to have faith in the will of God? And when you know and we know what the will of God is, it doesn't matter what you feel. It doesn't matter what people say. It doesn't matter if the world goes upside down. We know the will of God. We are the chosen generation. We are the royal priesthood. Hallelujah. We are going to be chosen by God. And when we enter into this faith, we will have the authority to save the world. Praise the Lord. And we go through these fires and trials and difficulties and hardship so God can empty us out of ourselves. So we surrender to God and say, God, have your way. So now when God blesses you and restores to you everything the devil's lost, he can trust you with it because you know you're not going to use it selfishly. You're going to only use it what he wants to use it for. Not what I want to do, not what you want to do, it's what he wants us to do. God gave us a church building, not for me, it's for him. And this church building has been used exactly for that purpose. For the other church to be here, it's part of the purpose. The reason we're going to the other church is to pray because we're tearing down the walls. Amen. Whether they know it or not, I am tearing it down. Praise the Lord. Because you can't go and pray with brothers and sisters if you have offenses in your heart. You cannot pray forgiveness for somebody if you hate somebody. You cannot pray for deliverance for somebody unless you are free yourself. Amen. You cannot deliver the drug addiction people until you know that you have been saved. They're going to want it. So God's going to bring the ones who want it and the ones who don't. Well, don't worry about that. Because not everybody's going to want it. And don't try to convince somebody who don't want it and don't hang around people who don't believe in God because you're going to become like them if you hang around too long. Because they're going to talk to you on your faith. I'm just glad you come today. I know it's a long message. I said, boys, can you go for more? No, that's enough for me. <laughs> next time, next time. Okay. Father, let this word go into our hearts. Let us learn how to apply these truths in our hearts. So we can come into the will of God. In any area that is not in the will of God in our lives, give us grace so we can humble and deal with ourselves and set us free from all these areas in our lives. Even every person that's listening on YouTube, let them receive the victory in overcoming the situation now. We pray, God, to open the heavens and pour out your spirit. 
And God woke up a mountain that's in our way, in our minds and lives, and whatever mountain we haven't recognized, He will show it to us. And when God, you're finished with us, we'll be glorified with the glory of God, and we're going to be highly favored of God and blessed, and we become a blessing for the rest of the world to come into the kingdom of God. Amen. We're not in competition. We're not having a rat race with the other churches, amen? And we're not trying to outdo anybody. We just want to draw an eye to God. We pray that the rest of the churches will catch on to this revelation, amen, and enter the glory of God's will and His faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. I'm just glad you came today. Hallelujah. I don't know where I'm always getting this incredible message, but I guess it's because for the last, <laughs> last two weeks I've been praying like, a, like extremely a lot. And I'm not stopping my prayers. Amen. Amen. I, don't, I don't just go to the prayer meetings. I pray at home too. I have to sit down and pray and then listen and pray and write some more and pray and listen more. Amen. And God loves you. May God give us grace in all our needs. Amen. Hallelujah. This week, I, I believe uh, Myrna's going to have her operation, right? We're going to pray for Myrna. We're putting our trust in you, God, that that we're going to trust you to show the doctor what to do. And God, you show the doctor what not to do. And lead him and guide him, even his hands and those who will be operating on her body, that everything will be exactly the way it's supposed to be. And God, that when they finish the operation, the recovery will be speedily. Hallelujah. And Myrna will be able to function a whole lot better from now on. Not walking in the pain or afflictions. And we thank you, God. If we ask anything in your name, you're going to do it. Just like you did with that baby and sick kids that had ulcers, a newborn baby. They operated and everything was a success because we trusted God to show the doctor. We're not asking whether he believes or not. It's nothing to do with it. You say, God, speak to the leader. Speak to the doctor. Amen. If you're facing court case, say, God, speak to the judge. Let him see. Let them make the righteous decision. God take charge of everything. Amen. In every situation that we're facing, mm -hmm. even myself, where the enemies try to come and steal and kill and destroy, and take away what belongs to me, mm -hmm. that is going to be restored now. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. And even with James, your situation, Mm -hmm. that God, you're going to intervene mm -hmm. and you're going to move by your spirit and you're going to put a move on that thing glory to God and everything's going to be restored in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to be dancing and praising God. Mm -hmm. Amen. And may God then give you the wisdom to grow into the revelation knowledge of into the will of God for your life mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. I have an update from my friend there in uh, Japan. Yeah. His dad just woke up out of the coma about 20 minutes ago. I just got the message on my phone. Awesome. He has, uh, he has complete memory of everything that happened. Uh, they said that he was supposed to be a vegetable and he's back up on his feet trying to walk out of the hospital. Praise the Lord. And they're Thank trying to stop God. him. Amen. There's four security guards and six doctors literally grabbing him by the arm and trying to stop him and he's pulling well, himself. Well, they don't understand what's happening. <laughs> it's a walking mirror. Yeah. So and that's in Okinawa. Amen. Thank you. Okay, then we're just going to take up the offering. Somebody can run around and 
pick up the offering basket now. Maybe the young lady can do it, yeah. You look like you're young enough to do it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is it God good? And we have a service tonight, so if you have a good testimony, then come and share it tonight. You know. And then we can have fellowship afterwards. Amen. How many understand? God is in charge. Amen. Praise the Lord. Isn't God good? I'm just happy now. Now you have a good reason when you get home that you you pray this week for all of us. Just raise it up to the Lord. Father, we thank you, God. You meet the offering, all the needs. Open the heavens in the favor of God. Rebuke the devourer. It shall not destroy the fruit of your grounds. Let us become the blessed, blessed land that you've chosen us to come and open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless. Have an awesome day.